This is the X-Pro Hawk DLX 250 EFI. It is a brand new dual sport motorcycle we just bought on Amazon for a tick under $2,000. In this video, I'm going over all the really cool gizmos and gadgets that make the Hawk so funny, but also a surprisingly good value and a motorcycle worth considering. I am very new to the world of motorcycles. I just got my endorsements and I have been shopping around for a dual sport as my first bike. Now, when it comes to the major manufacturers, you're gonna have to pay a lot if you want a new model. So the Sierra F250L, the Kawasaki KLX 250, the Yamaha XT250 all have MSRPs of around $5,200. Well, the Hawk here has a price of under $2,000 with free shipping, and it comes with all the title work you need to get this thing registered. So it's definitely an intriguing proposition, but the question is, is it any good? Now, if you look here on the side of the Hawk, it says 250, and I assumed that was the displacement of the single cylinder air-cooled motor, but I'm not so sure it's a 250, because if you look here on the importation sticker, it actually says, 229 cc's so perhaps a little bit of false advertising there on the side of the bike but it is still fuel injected electronic fuel injection if you look here i initially thought oh my gosh we got gypped that's a carburetor but no it in fact does have a computer that controls the uh, air and fuel mixture and it even has take a look at this a little oxygen sensor now, even though the displacement may be a little bit less than its Japanese rivals, it is still a physically large bike. So let me hop on here. I'm six foot one inch tall, and you can see it fits me pretty perfectly. I believe the seat height is somewhere around 36 inches. So this is not a short half size bike. It is a proper size dual sport. If you're looking for a well-known established brand for under $2,000, you're not gonna get one brand new. This bike is labeled Hawk DLX everywhere. It is here in the seat. It's also up here on the fairing. But apart from that, you know, there's no brand like Yamaha, Kawasaki attached to it. What you get instead is the word strongest here on the side. That is not an aftermarket sticker. That is how it came shipped to us. Starting with the gizmos and gadgets with the ignition, which is one of the strangest in the industry. First of all, it has a key, albeit one of the longest keys I have ever seen. I've got these crazy huge eight fingers and take a look at that. It is almost as long as my index finger and you can see the actual ignition is recessed way down in that tube. Now when you stick the key in, you don't get a very satisfying feeling. It's a, it's, a little, it's a little bit dinky, I think, is the word for it. It does not feel very secure, like a toddler with a rusty spoon handle could probably break into this motorcycle. But I think the manufacturer realized this and they gave you a really clever security solution. Now, if I click this little lever back, I now have a metal shield that blocks the key from going into the ignition. And I simply can't just pry it open. It is now double locked. To actually get to the ignition, I use this weird semi-hex design on the back of the key, and then I place it into the side ignition, I turn it, and now the ignition opens and I can actually access it with the key. Now our videographer and motorcycle uh, expert Alex here hates this. He thinks it is so cheap and just looks terrible. I think this is a brilliant way to keep your motorcycle extra secure for not a lot of money. It's, a, it's very clever even if it's a, a little hokey. But perhaps the biggest security measure to ensure that your motorcycle won't be stolen is back here, the giant Made in China sticker. Because I have a theory that not a lot of thieves are going to be targeting the Hawk DLX. First of all, there's not a lot of value in the used market for these things practically no value. There's not a lot of value for used Chineseium parts either, so you're probably pretty safe with your purchase here. All right, let's turn on the Hawk DLX. So first of all, of course, funky ignition there and then click it on, and that's the first thing that greets you, a full digital instrument cluster, probably one of the highest quality pieces of this motorcycle. Now you see speed is displayed prominently there, but it even has a tachometer and a trip computer. Next to that, we have vitals, including a proper fuel gauge and a neutral light, but it goes further than that because it even has a shift indicator. So you can see there, I just shifted into gear one. This is a brilliant system. It's actually really easy to see even in bright sunlight. And I think it's, it's a really premium feature that you get on the fuel injected model, but not on the base carbureted 
uh, entry level model. So I would strongly recommend getting the fuel injection not only for use at altitude, but also the higher end instrumentation. Hey everyone, this is Case from TFL Bike with our Ride Smarter Tip of the Month brought to you by Rider Justice. We hope you never get into an accident on your bike, but if you do, do yourself a favor and stay off social media until your claim is settled and you're back to full health. This is even more important if the accident wasn't your fault. Why? Well, you can be sure the insurance company will scour your social media feeds looking for any evidence they can use to lessen your settlement amount or worse, not pay you at all. One innocent post from you claiming, I felt great and I took a walk today, could cost you thousands of dollars. To learn more about how to ride smarter with common sense tips anyone can follow, go to riderjustice.com, the champions of biker rides, on the road, in the courtroom, and now across the country. Now moving on to some of the controls here on the handlebar, starting out with the headlight situation, which is very weird indeed. First of all, unlike just about every other road legal bike in the US, you can turn the headlight off completely. So there's an off and an on position. I don't know why you'd ever want it off, but you can turn it off if you desire. But beyond that, you've got a switch here for your low beams and a switch here for your high beams, as well as a switch to flash. So I can simply toggle down to flash the high beams. It's a pretty good system. The on off thing's a little bit weird. It's also not illuminated, but I do like the flash functionality. Now over here on the right side of the Hawk DLX, you've got your standard twist grip for your throttle. You've got your kill switch here, and one of the best features is an electric start. So simply push that button and the Hawk will fire into life. But even better than that, you can also manually start the Hawk by using the kickstart here as well. So they give you both. Here at the rear of the Hawk, you will find full lights, of course, but none of which are LEDs. So you've got a standard tail light here. You do have turn signals, which are a little bit flexy in case you drop it. Below that, you have a license plate light and the license plate holder. And speaking of plates, as I mentioned, they do ship this from Amazon with a folder and a binder containing everything you need to register this motorcycle for the road. So we'll do that. We'll try it and we'll follow up to make sure everything goes well with that. And we'll let you know what the scoop is. But you know, a little bit of flexibility here in the plastic and below that, you You'll find the 18 inch rear tire. Now one thing that our motorcycle expert Alex picked up right away, which I totally missed, is this right here. It does have a heat shield for the exhaust and the rear passenger, but it's plastic, which uh, I'll be curious to see how that fares with any kind of heat at all. Now here in the center of the Hawk, of course, you have your fuel tank, but one of the nicer features on this motorcycle is the fuel cap. Now typically this would be some plastic thing, but for some reason, which I'll never understand, the Hawk has a billet aluminum fuel cap. It is cold to the touch. It feels ridiculously high quality. It's just brilliant. And on top of the fuel cap, of course, you have this little fuel vent here. Now the fuel tank itself is also interesting. It is of course a metal tank and the capacity is ginormous. 3.7 gallons according to the website, which of course could be wrong, but if it is actually 3.7 gallons, this would make this almost twice as large as its standard dual sport competition. This bike does come equipped from the factory with both front and rear pegs. The rear pegs, of course, fold, and actually the front pegs, they will also hinge upward if you run them into a rock, so that's pretty nice and they feel pretty high quality. But one other feature that is nice is back here, full rear disc brake. No ABS, of course, but it does have disc brakes front and rear. Uh, this is a little bit hokey. The rear swing arm here is a very basic design. It doesn't look like it'll take much abuse, but be sure to stay tuned because Alex and Case, our motorcycle guys, are really gonna push this thing through a lot of punishing terrain and we'll uh, report back if that snaps in half. The Hawk came to us semi-assembled, I'd say about 70% assembled, and then we have a full series of putting it together. But you'll see here that the quality is hit and miss, I think is a fair way of putting it. So like a lot of the welds are a little bit hokey here and there, it did come scuffed in a few areas. Other parts are nicer, like the seat actually feels you know, pretty good for what it is. The handlebars feel okay and the gauges are really good. So it's just a little hit and miss here. Whereas on a Honda, you know that every weld would be perfect. But then of course you could get two Hawks for the price of one new Honda. Now here on the side of the bike, you also have, of course, your rear brake and your front brake. Um, you know, I've, I'll leave the full riding reviews to the experts, but the, the brakes definitely feel a little bit squishy. So those will probably have to be bled. A couple of interesting nice features here in the back of the Hawk. You do have an incorporated helmet lock. Simply use the key 
and click it open so you can lock your helmet up. Your helmet will probably have more value secondhand than the bike, so that is a very important function. And behind that, they do include a full toolkit. And I do mean a full toolkit, even though it comes shipped in this tiny, tiny little bag. Let's see what they give you. A 14 and a 12 millimeter wrench. <laughs> they give you a, a wrench here for the spark plugs. And they give you a 10 and an 8 millimeter wrench and a double sided screwdriver. The funny thing about this is you could probably disassemble the entire bike using these four tools because everything on here is as far as I can tell. Yep, that works. I bet that's a 10. Oh, that's an 8. Yeah, pretty much all the hardware is a 10, 8, 12, or 14, and they give you everything you need. There are some really funny labels on the Hawk, including this one here, which appears to be a bad translation. This is, of course, your VIN plate. But take a look at this. This vehicle confirms to all applicable USA Federal Motorcycle Safety Standards in effect on the date of manufacture shown above. It, of course, should be conforms, not confirms. But the funnier one is down here on the shifter. The Hawk has a pretty standard five-speed manual transmission, one down, four up. But they give you a little sticker to explain how to operate the shifter. It says, mark of shifting. Prohibit shifting before break away the clutch and decelerate. I'm not really sure what they were going for there, but uh, be sure to do that when you're shifting your Hawk DLX. Also included for under $2,000 is the bar pad here, which protects you in the event of an off-road accident. And also take a look at this. You do have full mirrors with one of the craziest mirror shapes I've seen in the industry. The Hawk DLX has these really beefy rear grab handles, great for a rear passenger, and actually pretty good too if you get this bike bogged down. They're not plastic, they actually will recover the motorcycle. Now in terms of wheels and tires, speaking of recovery, it's got a 21 inch front wheel and 18 inch rear wheel, and these tires are Yuan Xing um, 410-18s. That's as, as far as I, I can get about knowing what's going on here with the tire situation. They're like semi nobbies. I'm not imagining they're going to be very good on or off road. So maybe something you'd want to upgrade in the future. All right, there you have it. The X-Pro Hawk DLX 250 EFI. I think I got everything in there. An Amazon bike for under $2,000 shipped. Now be sure to stay tuned because we're going to have a whole bunch of videos kind of explaining the ownership experience behind one of these Chinese bikes. But for a first impression from someone who is very new to the motorcycle world, I could definitely see myself buying this as a first bike. The quality is definitely not as bad as I was expecting. And, you know, I could buy two of these for the price of a Yamaha or a Honda or a Suzuki. Brand new. Now, would I get a used Yamaha Suzuki over this? Maybe, but it depends on the deal. Well, be sure to stay tuned. A lot of fun stuff coming up. And as always, this is Tommy for TFL Bike. Let's see what this thing sounds like. All 229 cc's. Pretty good. Kind of meany.